Ow. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today, I wanna to talk about the iSell Fitness Power Bar, which you can see in front of you here. Been using it the last couple of weeks and posting a lot of my feedback on Instagram, which has brought on a lot of comments and questions, especially when are you going to do a video review? So I think this is timely because I think this bar is gonna check the box for a lot of people looking for a power bar, not to mention with the current events going on in the world today where many of us are being forced to consider and buy home gyms. We want something that's not gonna break the bank because anytime we have to spend unplanned money, we want to spend that money wisely, and I think this is a good bar to consider. So speaking of budget bars that aren't going to break the bank, this Bear Steel version, which I have in front of me, retails for $173. Now, they do have other finishes like a black phosphate and a blue ceramic, which is going to increase the price. But to be honest, I prefer Bear Steel or stainless steel in most cases because there's nothing between your hands and the steel. There's no extra coatings that are going to fill in the knurling or dull a little bit. And speaking of knurling, this bar right here, for $173 has some of the sharpest knurling I've ever felt on a barbell. And that's including my over $700 Kabuki bar, my Rogo Haya power bars, my Rep Fitness EX bars, Texas power bars, Alico bars, some of the most aggressive knurling that I have felt in terms of sharpness. Now, that's not always a selling point for everybody, but for most people looking for power bars, it's a desirable feature, but it also is how the bar performs. Because for instance, a Texas power bar has very aggressive knurling, but being 20 and a half millimeters with really thick collars, I do find that that bar tends to flex and bend a little bit more under heavier loads. This bar does not do so, and I wouldn't expect it to, because when you take a look at the specifications, it meets a lot of what I would consider power bar standards, being that the length itself is standard. It's a 29 millimeter bar, so about thicker than a Texas power bar, for instance. It's about a 205 to 210K tensile strength rating, so a little bit stronger than what you'd find in stainless steel, but what I would still consider average for most good power bars out there and it has collars that aren't overly thick either or overly thin. In fact, they're a little bit thicker than a Ohio Power Bar 45 pound version, but not as thin as something like an Alico or the 20 kg Ohio Power Bar version. So this bar itself, it meets a lot of good specs. It performs extremely well under squatting, benching, and deadlifting. And again, based off the specs, you would expect it to. In terms of construction, like you can see, it's bare steel, center knurling, just as aggressive, has powerlifting ring marks. Again, I already talked about the collars. The sleeves on this actually spin fairly well, not that that is a big selling point for power bars, but they are nice in that regard. But overall, this thing is constructed extremely well at an extremely low price of $173 before shipping. But that being said, it's not perfect. There are some rooms for improvement, and I think a lot of that comes down to the construction and the consistency of the bar. So for this particular bar, even though there's no glaring issues with it, if you take a look at some of the finer finishings of where the neural terminates, it gets a little bit sloppy. But again, given that it's a budget bar, I fully expect that to be the case. I also know several other people who have had this bar who have had a little bit of mixed feelings on the knurling, where I talk to them and say that it's the most aggressive bar and sharpest bar that I felt. They don't feel the same. And when they share pictures of me of that knurling, it looks like a totally different bar. So unfortunately, one of the downsides with a more budget friendly pick is you will see more inconsistencies across the line. Things just aren't always standardized, especially when you are going overseas to outsource and you can't have someone on site all the time to spot check stuff. It's not till you get it back into the shop after having shipped from overseas that you can really see what you get. And sometimes you are a little bit disappointed in that regard. Now, one of the big reasons I really like iSell Fitness is number one, this bar is great for the price, but also after speaking with the owner and speaking with people who are in the area of which he's located, which happens to be New Jersey, I know that he takes his bars to a lot of different gyms, gives them to a lot of different lifters to use and test out, takes their feedback and makes changes before placing large orders with his supplier. So he's really vested into making good products that are really tested and approved by the lifters. And I know from our conversations, even my feedback he's taken to heart, which I appreciate because there's a lot of owners and gym companies out there that kind of just go and do their own thing and they don't listen to feedback. He always does, which I can really admire in that regard. That being said, I brought up the knurling issue to him because again, sharpest bar I own right here for $173, yet I've seen someone else with a bar that looks a lot different. 
And one of the things he told me in terms of production is the way they were doing things was one every 10 bars is when they change the bit for the drill for the knurling because he's seen that there's been some inconsistencies as that drill bit gets duller and duller, so does the knurling itself. He since made changes where instead of one every 10 bars, they're gonna change it out to like one every five bars or so. So the bar should be more consistent in that regard. But again, given the price point of $173 for this bar, I don't think you can really stand to argue. Now, even though, again, this is a very affordable bar, has very sharp knurling, which I like a lot. One of the other things that was really appreciated, which goes understated a lot, is the way that it was delivered. So the tubing that came was nice. It was marked with his logo, which again is a nice little touch, which a lot of more budget-friendly picks don't do. But the end caps on this were screwed in, which is a design that I really like because I haven't had any issues with them being delivered, as opposed to other people who might staple or tape and leave it to the shippers and carriers that when that bar shows up, one of those end caps is almost always bent, broken, or not there. And that typically impacts the quality of the bar that you get because it's been banged around a lot and the sleeves fall out the end. Not the case with this bar, really well packaged, really sharp, aggressive neuro, really well performing for again, all three lifts. And I think for the price for $173, you can't really go too wrong until you get to the shipping. And again, this is a downside of a smaller manufacturer. Unfortunately, it's just the way things are. The shipping isn't as nice as something say Rogue where they have a nice system set up where they get a lot of good discounts. For me, shipping from New Jersey to Rhode Island is gonna cost roughly around $37, I think, based off the shipping costs, which bring the price of this bar to around $210 or so. Shipping to the West Coast is more expensive, so depending on where you are, it might even add to the cost and bump it up to like $250 or so. So again, take that into mind that eventually the pricing will be coming down. That's one of the things I brought up to the owner, one of the things he's aware about and trying to work on getting better shipping rates and better deals but the price for this bar can fluctuate a bit. But even in, even at the most expensive of let's say $250, having the sharpest knurling, sharper knurling than a $700 Kabuki bar, having the same type of performance as a lot of my other higher end power bars and being something that supports a smaller business and someone that actually listens and responds to feedback, I think is something really well worth considering. And if you're in the market for a good power bar that's not gonna break the bank and you're within an area where the shipping isn't overly expensive, this is a bar you should definitely look at and I will link it in the comment and description box below in case you're interested in checking it out. If you have other questions that I wasn't able to answer on this particular video, let me know. In the meantime though, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.